everybody, it's Carol here at Oak House Journals. Thanks so much for joining me. I really hope you're enjoying your holiday season. I know I certainly am. We've got a quiet day here today, so I'm grabbing a couple of hours uh, in the craft room, and I thought that I would make a start on rebinding my 2022 collage planner, because as you can see, it's got very, very alligator mouthed and it doesn't sit nicely on my shelf here in the craft room so I thought I would rebind it. Um, so I will be taking my planner apart and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark each page, let me grab a pencil, I'm going to mark each assignment with the number. So this is assignment number one and then obviously I'll mark this one as assignment number two. Um, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm planning to back my pages or my assignments together. So assignment one will go on to here once I've taken it out of my planner so that assignment one and two will sit back to back like that. That being the case, I won't actually be able to see which is which assignment but I will want to know what my prompts are for each of the assignments and I don't want to get them confused as I work through my book and take them out of the actual ring binder here. I've got all my pages numbered up, I've got a pair of wire cutters and I'm just going to cut away this ring binder. Now I've got wire cutters because I don't know whether or not there's wire in the middle of this and obviously the wire cutters will make short work of that. And I'm not cutting down the middle, I'm cutting close to where the ring binder actually meets the holes on the cover because I want to get my pages out with minimal damage to them if I can. I will be doing some cutting down of my pages but I don't really want them damaged at this stage. And this is very easy to do. I'm not even sure there's wire inside this. Um, it could be just plastic. It's very easy to snip through. And last one. There we go. So all I'm going to do now is just take out those pieces. we go all my pages are now loose and that's how thick my book is going to be so I'm just going to get rid of these well, I'm going to keep the cover of my planner for the time being because I'm not sure if I'm going to use that on the cover of my new book or I might just use it as cardstock um, but I am going to put it to one side and keep it. Similarly, this first page. This page I will want because that's got my first assignment on it. Now, if you look inside the planner, you will see that you will have all the pages with holes down the side. What I've done with this first page, my holes were down this side, I've just trimmed those holes off to the same width as this side so it's five millimeters or half a centimeter um, and effectively it gives you a page that is 14.5 centimeters in width so I'm going to go all the way through my planner now trimming off all my pages <laughs> all my assignments so all my edges have been trimmed away and this is what my planner looks like now and I'm saving these because I will probably use these in the collages that we do next year or for other projects. So I'm going to pop those to one side. This gives me an idea now of how thick or how wide my spine is going to be when I'm rebinding this. Um, but I'm just gonna pop that to one side. What you're left with once you've done that is the front cover as I've mentioned before where are we? And where's that first page? It's just got stuck. The first page that I was going to use as scrap. And then you will be left at the, after you've done this with one back page and then these spare pages. Um, you might have used those in your planner as you went along. I didn't. So I'm going to save these and then that pocket. 
and then there's the back cover. So that's what you'll have left over. So I'm going to again pop those to one side. Now what I'm going to do with these pages is I'm going to hinge them. So let's pop those to one side. All I've got here is a sheet of about 80 GSM photocopier paper. Now, normally I would not create a hinge out of 80 GSM paper because it just wouldn't be strong enough. But I'm going to double this over and I'm also going to reinforce it. So I'm, I'm pretty comfortable about what I'm doing. I am just going to trim this piece of paper to the height of my pages. The height is 23 centimeters and it's just short of nine inches. So I'm going to trim my piece of paper. I'm going to measure eight centimeters across. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight brings me to there. So I'm just going to trim it with my knife. So now we have a piece of paper that is 23 centimeters in height by eight centimeters in width. I'm going to fold it in half. So I've doubled it up, so it's gonna be double strength now. And then I'm going to just fold the top layer in half again. And I've got here some ordinary masking tape. Now, ideally, I would have made my hinges out of Tyvek, but I didn't have any or I don't have any. If you open out your piece of paper, your hinge, you will see that on this back piece, I've marked the center point. I'm just gonna take my masking tape now and I am just going to run it roughly down the center where that line has, where that line should be like that. So I'm just gonna trim off the bottom. So that is going to be the reinforcing for my hinge. And now I'm going to glue the whole thing together. So my hinge now is four centimeters across. It's glued, it's reinforced with some masking tape inside and it's 23 centimeters in height. I finished making all my hinges last night and here they are finished and I glued them and then I left them to dry underneath a heavy weight so that they would be nice and crisp in terms of the folds and I also made myself a little note so that I knew so that I could work out how many um, actual hinges I was going to need because what I decided to do was for my signatures I'm going to use two hinges, one inside each other, like that. So I needed to have 14 hinges, but I will actually have seven signatures. Now, you're not seeing seven um, doubled up hinges here. You're only seeing five. And that's because I started to put together my signatures. So I'll go through those in a moment with you. But um, I also had to bear in mind how I was going to show the prompts for each assignment. Now, one idea I had for that was actually, um, if I take one of my assignments, putting a eyelet at the top with a jump ring through it and dangling down from it the prompts for that particular page so that when I flipped it over and you saw the next assignment that was glued to the reverse, I could use the same eyelet and a different jump ring perhaps to dangle down the prompts for that particular one. Um, that was quite a nice idea but I wasn't um, too comfortable that it would work particularly well. The other idea I had was about putting a flap at the outside edge of my book so that the flap on this side, if I put, if I do something like this, if I put that there and that one behind. So create a flap that is sandwiched in there on the outside edge of my journal. And the idea I had was that I would put the prompts for this page on this side of the flap. And then when I turn over, I've got the prompts 
for this page on that side of the flap but I wasn't comfortable with that because that was going to give me a lot more bulk at the outside edge of my journal which is where a journal will get more alligator mouthed um, if it's going that way so what I decided to do was to create something that could be actually stitched in to my journal so something like that so what I've come up with let me just pop those away what I came up with was these, let me pop those to one side as well. I came up with just a fold of paper, really, really simple and easy. Now, for those of you that want dimensions, um, it's eight centimetres high by 19 centimetres wide. And as you can see, all I've done is fold it in half. And the reason for that size is because I took the little prompts that Marguerite Miller has on her website, printed them off and just cut them round the border so they will fit quite nicely onto this fold of paper. And my idea was to, as I've said, sandwich this between the hinges. So let me show you. This is my first signature. Oops, a daisy and for the very first page i want to have on here some instructions about what the collage book is is all about so i instead of putting my first assignment on the very first page like that and have my cover here i decided i would leave this page blank if i open up my first signature there's my first assignment there i'm going to take this away this is my second hinge my hinge is in here and I've just paper clipped, as you can see, my assignments to it. So that's my first assignment. And this is my sixth assignment because this is my second hinge here. So if I put that second hinge in the centre of the first one, I've got my first assignment there. I've got my second assignment there. And then sandwiched between the two, I've got my little flap with my prompts on. So that goes that will just sit in there and get sewn in when this signature is all sewn together. So there's my prompt for page one on my first assignment. There's my prompts for assignment two. Then if I open up my second hinge, there's my third assignment. And for this one, um, this is the center of the signature. So this one is slightly different. For this one, I've put the prompts on this side and the prompts for this one on this side this will get stitched into my signature same as we do with envelopes and the like when we're making journals this will get stitched into the center of the signature when it's stitched to the spine and then as you can see I've made my, left myself a note so that I know what I'm doing then this will get glued together like that when it's stitched in so it will just become one flap like that and then as I go over the page, obviously this is the um, first slip of paper for assignment number five and assignment number six. Now, <laughs> this is assignment number seven, but I don't have a piece of paper. And that is because I've done this. I've left that blank page. Now, if you don't do that, then this will make life easier for you. But I have. So... I now go on to my second signature, which is here. And to start that one off, I have used one of these little slips of paper and I put that round the outside of my signature. And it's got my prompts for assignment seven there. It's got my prompts for assignment eight here. And then as normal, as with the first signature, and that's coming away for some reason. Oh, that's because I pulled the paper clip off. Um, that one obviously will open and my prompts are tucked in there and similarly with that one. So I will need to do that each and every time I create a signature from here on in. But um, I just thought I'd very quickly try and show you that. I'm just going to go away now and put all my signatures together like this with my prompt cards, everything paper clipped together. 
Obviously, you could go ahead and glue everything together straight away, but I sometimes get distracted and I'll have a signature in the wrong place or a prompt in the wrong place. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to clip everything together with paper clips, make sure it's all in the right place and aligned, and then I'm going to go in and glue it all. So I'll be back when that's done. My signatures look like this now. They're all glued together and they're now ready for me to actually sew to the hidden spine and to insert inside my book. But before I get on with that part of what I'm doing, I thought I would just show you the last signature. So let me just pop the rest to one side. And I had three um, spare slots, if you will, on those hinges. So what I decided to do, so this is my assignment 51 and 52, and this is the little um, prompt card that will be stitched into the centre. Now, if you remember, I said that once I'd stitched my signatures to the hidden spine, then what I was going to do is I would glue this shut so that there is the prompts for 51 and the prompts for 52. And this will be nicely sandwiched together there. Um, so on the back of um, assignment 52, I had a blank page and um, what I decided to do was use the scrap pages that are in the back of the 2022 planner. Now these were for us to cut out and use as we wanted to on various assignments but I never got round to, to using mine so I've glued one in there on the back of assignment 52 and I've glued another one here and I've just put the back pocket from the planner cover here and if you remember I had these pieces tucked into this back pocket and these were bits and bobs that I wanted to use or I thought I might want to use throughout the year but but didn't get round to using them. Now my intention is to collage over this white and the pocket and tie that in with the rest of my journal um, and because that's the back hinge and my pages and this is the inside hinge and my pages because I had a spare tab if you will that didn't apply to anything there's no prompts for these two pages all I did was take a couple of collage cards and I've glued them on either side of that little um, flap the same as I've done with these to the hinge so that I've got a little bit of um, a collage inclusion there. So that's what my final signature looks like. And as I've mentioned, these are all now good to go, ready for me to actually sew to something like this. So I will be marking this out um, where my signatures need to go. And then I'll be using this to form the internal spine or the hidden spine of my book. Now, this piece, if I just move that up slightly, this piece isn't long enough and it definitely is not wide enough. If I do want to push these in, I will have to create some sort of cover for my book to condense it, keep that pressure on. Um, or I need to create a wider spine. So I'm going to be thinking about that next. The book I planned to use for my journal was this, and I thought that it was going to be wide enough. And if I put that on there, you can see that, yes, this is marginally wider, but it's not wide enough if my signatures are relaxed. It will be fine if I push my signatures together and as I say, if I do that, then I will have to create some sort of cover for this. So I'm going to have a little bit of a play with this. Um, I had an idea of perhaps using that on the front, still keeping this gorgeous orange. I thought that would be quite nice. Um, and I was going to get rid of the holes there. The first thing I've got to do, or the first job, is really to gut this and chop it down the inside there. And similarly there and take out the text block and then I'll have a bit more of an idea of whether I need to actually cut this down to size um, but let me just work through and see what that looks like and then I will come back to you.
I've cut the text block out of the encyclopedia and if I just open it up you can see that I've put my signatures inside and they fit nicely but if I leave the spine as it is this will be slightly alligator mouthed or as I said before if I don't want it to be like that I can force this cover closed a little bit in which case I need to have some sort of closure on the front as you can see the signatures are right down to this bottom edge Clearly you wouldn't have them that low down, you'd have them about an eighth of an inch away from this bottom edge to protect the papers. But it gives me an idea, if I look at the top, how much I'm going to need to cut away here from the top. And you can also see here how much I need to cut away here. So I've made the decision, I'm going to leave the spine as it is. But what I will do is I will make some sort of closure to go on the front here. Both edges are trimmed and sanded and so is the top. Peeled back a bit more of the inside lining paper here and I'm going to glue this down here so that I have this co orange covering for the spine and that on there and that on there. And I'm also going to glue this down here onto this portion here where which is the book cloth to reinforce it because I'm not increasing the size of the spine beyond this piece but I am taking my spine to these book boards here so I need to help that book cloth there and reinforce it a little bit My cover's all cut to size now, I've still got raw edges up here, but I'm happy that I managed to save the book cloth so that I'll have this orange um, going all the way through. And I love this. I will be covering over the writing on here, but I love the pop of orange and that's what I was trying to, to save. So I still got raw edges here um, on both these long edges and along the top, but I will be covering those over in due course. Um, I've managed to find a piece of canvas that was down the side of um, a deed, an old deed packet. So that is perfect for supporting my hidden spine in there. Now this is the canvas side up, but if I flip it over that way, then it's white, which is brilliant. Um, but you won't see the edges of this, that most of this will be covered up with the signatures. And I've made myself a template for stitching in my signatures. As I said, I've got seven signatures, so these long lines down here are obviously where I'm going to be stitching in those signatures. And these horizontal lines here, where they intersect, that's where I'm going to be doing my five hole pamphlet stitch. So I've made a template for that. And as you can see, that fits perfectly inside there with a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm hoping that's going to um, stop it being too alligator mouthed. And I've also made myself another little template here. And this is going to go down the inside of um, the center of the signatures. And as you can see, I've marked out where I'm going to be making my holes and doing my five hole pamphlet stitch. So I'm all set and ready to go now. So I'm going to stitch in my signatures and show you the text block of my signatures when they're all bound together and ready to go in my cover. My text block looks like this now and everything is stitched in. So there's my lines of stitching and there's my reinforcing um, canvas. And as you saw, that was my first page. Something will go over the, the top of that. That's what it looks like on the back with my back pocket. And if I just open it up randomly inside, um, let's see if I can find. So this is the start of a new signature. So there's the instructions or the prompts rather for 23, which was that page. There's the prompt for 24. 
then 25 and 26 and then coming to the center of the signature it looks like that so this one if you remember was the one that was open and blank in the middle and then it just gets glued together once the signature is stitched so yeah i'm really happy how this has come together and if i bring in my cover let's just lift that up if i bring in my cover pop my text block inside it's brilliant um, i'm not getting much in the way of alligator mouth at all i'm just very very lightly holding it shut there i could get away with not actually having to have a closure on here but i do want to if i just open it up again these are my pieces of canvas as you saw let me just center that and there's one there now that probably would be enough to hold the text block in place bearing in mind that i'm going to be collaging over the top of this to actually glue it down even more and similarly on this side but to do a belt and braces what i've done is i have got a piece of cotton fabric and i am going to glue my text block onto that fabric like that and i will then have uh, an additional piece that goes into uh, or across this page i've got fluff here everywhere um that will go across this page and will help to hold it down even more securely so i'm going to now just glue this piece of fabric onto my spine here so i've got some fabri-tac glue and i'm just going to very generously go all the way over my spine here with the Fabri-Tac glue. And it doesn't matter if it seeps through my fabric because it's not going to be seen because this area is going to be hidden by the, um, the spine itself of the book. My piece of fabric and just drape it across like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this canvas piece also to my fabric. And the same on the other side. The fabric is now glued to the spine of my book and I've just laid it inside the uh, cover. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue all this and stick it onto my cover. And for that, I'm going to use art glitter glue. I haven't got any book binding glue. If I did, I'd be using that. Um, I've taken the fine knit, um, fine nozzle off that. Um, off my glue because I actually want a good amount of glue to come out onto my um, piece here so I'm just going to put a very generous amount of glue onto here and ideally I should have put a piece of grease proof paper or something underneath the fabric to protect this but it doesn't really matter for the simple reason that I'm going to be gluing something over the top of that so um, I'm not too bothered so I'm just as you can see got a very generous amount on there I'm going to grab a paintbrush and just completely cover it like this Spine up, close that over the top, 
flip it over, make sure it's nicely down and secure. And I'm not going to do anything with it, I'm just going to leave that to stand now for a good half an hour or so to make sure the weight of the book is holding that text block in place whilst it glues. Here's the text block now in place, glued into the cover and it looks like that. So I'm really happy with how this has gone and if I open up the back you can see that's where my fabric has been glued to the canvas and then there will be um, collaging all over the top of that. So that's the back and this is the front like that. I've got a little bit of lifting here on the canvas but I can soon pop a bit of glue underneath that to secure it. Maybe it's just not quite dry, we'll, we'll see. So, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to collage all over the cover and the inside and down the spine and I'm going to create a closure for this using this um, front cover from the planner and that's it, that's all I need to do to finish off so this is the journal stroke rebound planner as it looks now and I have to say I'm really really pleased at how it came out and um, yeah really good so as you can see I've done uh, an enclosure here and this is five millimeter flat elastic and all I've done is use the front of the planner to create my closure I've used one of the I think they're called hitch pins um, from Ranger or Tim Holtz and I've just sandwiched my elastic, a loop of elastic under here. I've stitched all the way around and I've used some extra cardboard on the back to give it some, some strength and in hindsight I probably would have used something even thicker for my, um, my front cover because as you can see it has bowed a little bit not much but a little bit and I'm hoping that will flatten out in time and I've stitched all the way around with some black black thread so that's what it looks like on the reverse this is the cover of the encyclopedia now I loved this orange book binding um, cloth so I've left that um, or I've left as much as I could of that showing so I've collaged over the top because there was writing down the middle, I've put a strip of collaging down the middle to hide the writing and that's the back. And actually, I think I like the back better than the, than the front and I've left that little bit along the bottom there. So, if I open a, her up, this is what it looks like inside and I've collaged the inside cover here. This was the new page that I created and I took this out of the original planner and then along the bottom here were Marguerite Miller's um, contact details and the ISBN number for the actual collage planner and I've just used the information inside on how to um, create a collage with the assignments just in case somebody picks this up in the future and doesn't realise what it's all about or, or my old grey cells diminish over time and I don't remember. So that's what it looks like inside and there we go. You start off with the, um, the pages and I'm happy that this will lie relatively flat for a big chunky book like it is. So there we go and working my way all the way through to the back pages. If you remember, that was my last assignment of 2022. And then I used a couple of pages out of the planner that we could cut up and use if we wanted to. I didn't use them, so I've used them inside here to fill up those last three pages. This was a spare flap, if you remember, from these which are the prompt cards and then on the back here I kept the pocket page collaged that and left a little white strip along there so that I know that it is a pocket and then I've just done a little personal letter 
to whoever sees this journal in the future and collage the back. So there we go, everybody. I uh, have to say I'm really, really pleased at how this little one turned, turned out. Um, it was a bit of a long job, bearing in mind that I had to back each of the assignments um, together and create those little flaps for the prompt cards. But I had a lovely afternoon yesterday collaging the, the cover and um, making this closure. So I hope you enjoyed seeing that. I have off to one side here the assignments for 2023. I printed those off yesterday. So I'm going to get ahead of the game for next year. I'm going to make those little um, prompt card tabs that you saw with these now and um, set up my planner for next year. So have a wonderful, wonderful holiday season, everybody. Enjoy your break. Enjoy your Christmases and let's have a wonderful crafting 2023. Thank you so much as always for watching. Take care. Bye bye.